All right, so in this session, we are going to contribute to Cloud Adoption Framework Landing Zone and more specifically to the module, a unified module that uh, consolidates all the components that we deploy on Azure. So what I'm doing is usually developing side by side with the Terraform documentation on the left side of the screen and on the right side, you can see that I'm working here inside Visual Studio uh, Codespace, um, Codespace GitHub running Visual Studio Code. So um, you can see that my starting point is usually to start with the examples. So I'm right now inside the examples uh, directory and I'm going to create two examples under the compute uh, tree, the guys that I want to add. So I'm starting um, off a blank page. I don't know anything about dedicated hosts and I'm going to discover it as I'm writing it. So here I'm on the page on the left side and I can see that I want to have a um, dedicated host group and I also have dedicated hosts. So those are the two entities that I'm going to uh, add here. So I'm just create the big uh, level um, entities here and then I'm just going to review basically the fields that are um, available to me in this example and I'm just gonna uh, add them into my uh, definition. So you see I'm not even into any integration right now, I'm just basically copying it uh, here. So I'm creating my host group, I probably need to give it uh, the name, the resource group uh, name here. You see that in Kafka form we're going to create the resource group separately, so we uh, specify the resource group key instead of the resource group name because the logic will point that to us and same thing for the uh, region. So the location will actually be region inside our language and then we're going to see how we stitch that to the uh, module inside the logic. But right now in the configuration I'm going to have to define okay the automatic placement uh, enabled, the support for different zones within an Azure region and tags, which are the usual tags that we give inside an Azure um, deployment. So I'm doing that for the host uh, group. It only exports the output ID, okay. And then I'm gonna fill this, uh, this example with basically what I uh, want. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. You can see I'm just taking the example from another one with the global settings and the resource group. And I'm just going to take the resource group key here and dedicated host uh, group. I just give it a different uh, name for the user environment. And basically then I can start customizing how I want my example to feel like. Automatic placement enabled, so uh, it's a Boolean. So let's enable it and the zones, it's going to be a list. So, okay, I can specify it on one here and then the tags, it's a usual uh, map that I'm going to define here. So that's for my dedicated uh, host group. So it's probably the set of hypervisor that I will put together and I want them to be in the same zone. Enable me uh, fault domain uh, count. And uh, then I will put the host by themselves. So here that's the really the hypervisor that I'm going to deploy. So I'm giving it a name, I'm giving it the region where I want to deploy it. The host group ID, we're going to have to reference that. We'll see that, uh, we'll see about that later. But now we have a bunch of other attributes that we need to stitch. So here I have the SKU name, so I'm gonna pick one of those guys, the platform fault domain. So that's for volume licensing and, and others. And I have same thing, a tag, a set of tag, a map of tags that I can enable on this environment. So I have my example uh, ready. This is the first example where I'm going to just deploy the, the platform components. I'm probably going to have to do that later and add a, a virtual machine uh, to that, but we'll see how we code that a bit later. 
So now that we have the example, let's code uh, the logic. So I'm going to compute uh, now inside a slash module in the module tree. And I'm going to create dedicated uh, host. And I don't know how much I need um, right now. Probably need going, going to need multiple ones, but let's see. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I have an example of structure here for proximity placement group, which is extremely similar. So let's not reinvent it. And um, we'll just take it and copy uh, the gist of it into the other directory. Because the main, basically, it's just specifying the naming provider that I'm going to use, uh, the locals for passing the tags. So that's things that I can uh, highly uh, reuse. I'm going to have... Uh, the need for an output file as well. So here I'm going to give it the right name first and then I'm going to specify the output object I need. Then for all the rest, the variables, etc., I can reuse it. So here I'm just taking my variables, doing a bit of a cleanup and let's see what we need for this guy. So then I'm going to create my uh, root. So the guy that is going to call actually uh, from the root of the module, the creation of the dedicated host and the dedicated host groups. So here I uh, realize that I'm going to have a call to this guy uh, when I'm going to fill the local compute dedicated host. And I'm going to have the same thing in the output where I'm going to define this output object. So I'm exporting the full output as it has been uh, exported, there, exported there. So I'm defining the path to that and I realize that I have some uh, misspelling uh, here, dedicated host into the path. So let's do a bit of cleanup here to remove the variables that I don't need. And I will have really the basic uh, fundamentals of uh, nesting all the parameters I want inside the uh, settings uh, variable, which will be then uh, iterated. So it's going to be very easy for me to uh, make it evolve over time. Uh, so I'm going to use this concept right now. Okay, so now I realize that, okay, I have a need for a dedicated host. I have a need for a dedicated host groups. So I need to put that into uh, the plurals and I will probably have uh, multiple directories here. So uh, you see here, I just review that and realize that, okay, I will, not, I will need two directories. So we create the first one for the group and then the host and Usually the, the, the convention that we use is to use the plural for that. So you see here, dedicated host groups and dedicated hosts, which would be my two, uh, my two modules, the, the way I'm going to call the two guys. So we can go and just do a copy paste of this guy. And then uh, we will be just uh, modifying what's happening there. Okay. So. Uh, at this point, I'm going to verify, okay, I have the right directory, the right path, probably, let's see. Uh, now I'm going to start eventually test that. So into CAF example, um, that's the basically the local example, I'm going to have to define those variables as well. Because here you can see I'm calling them from local.compute the dedicated host group and dedicated host into line uh, three and line 20 tree, but we need to call them uh, um, and instantiate them inside the CAF uh, example. So I'm going to create those variables here at the top level of this um, uh, variables.tf for the logic here. And inside CAF example, it's the one that combines every single possibilities uh, for all the capabilities of the module. So same thing. This is where I'm going to create actually the local dot compute dot dedicated host group as it is seen by the uh, by the module when in instantiated by the CAF examples. So dedicated host group and dedicated host. I'm going to 
add this guy here. I shouldn't have to do that. I can do that with FMT, but okay, I will do that. And now let's uh, sort a little bit. So I'm using the command palette in VS Code. Uh, it's typically uh, easier when I have to merge different branches of the code. Uh, it just allows us to have a, an easier merge um, when we have everything uh, uh, alphabetically sorted. Okay, so now we have the dedicated host uh, available inside the example. And we started to have um, the structure for the module. So now uh, let's go back to the definition of our example. And this is really the stage where I uh, start to code what's inside the example. And I'm really going to uh, here check at the implementation of how my example looks like and how my code looks like. And this is a two ways avenue here. You see that I missed something inside my variables. Uh, I obviously here missed uh, my uh, uh, iterations and my structure. So I'm going to add that. And then as well from my code, I'm going to see stuff that I missed inside um, my variable as well. So here I'm going to put that into my uh, object uh, iteration. So here I put my index being or my key being uh, dh1. So dedicated host group one, even though it should be a dedicated host group. And I'm going to do the same for dedicated host uh, variable just below. So here I now remember that I need to put which dedicated host group I'm going to refer to. So here I'm going to link in this particular example my dedicated host. So usually we want to uh, decorrelate the objects and associate them via uh, keys uh, like this. So it allows better lifecycle management and better, uh, better evolution of the object. So Let's get started and put some logic behind uh, for now uh, what we have, which are pretty much uh, empty uh, empty shells. Okay, so we're going to create a new file where I'm going to put my uh, module.tf. And this is really where I'm going to put this time the call to the uh, logic. So I'm into the dedicated host group here. I'm just going to very basically uh, copy paste this guy here give it a name and then map the variables to the fields that are present into this module. So that's why the side by side is important here, because I really want to have a view on um, first the examples that I wrote on the right hand side of the screen, and also the side by side with the specs, uh, because I want to see uh, what are the things that I have defined here and uh, what are the things that are missed? What are the required? Uh, that's an important checklist I'm doing actually requiring um, the variables or putting them as uh, optional. So if they're all required, then no brainer. It's a var dot settings dot the value that I want to, to get. And then the uh, non-required field, the optional ones, I'm going to use it with a try. So here var location, I get it from uh, variables because that's the module that's going to resolve that for me. And here, uh, this one, automatic placement enabled, typical. So I'm going to say equal. I'm going to do a try. And if I get a value, I feel it. If don't, if don't, then I will just... Uh, default it to either uh, null or default it to the default value of uh, the module. So here, same thing for the zones. Zones is optional, so I'm going to do a try on this one. And since I'm very lazy, I'm just going to copy paste this thing. And here, I don't want anything by uh, default, so I'm just put it to null. And into uh, tags, I will just have a local dot tags, which is something that I resolved already in the main.tf by convention in the module, which says uh, the things that I want to have locally or um, and com combine with the thing I get as an argument. 
Here you see that I need to implement the naming convention uh, provider. So that's something that I will do later. I need to check into the CAF uh, naming convention provider if we have something that uh, is actually able to generate names for Azure RM dedicated host group. I don't have that yet, but this is okay. I'm going to do a PR separately to add that capability to the provider. And then I will have an additional resource that I will call before I call the uh, Azure RM provider capability. So now I'm on, I'm on the host group. I'm going to define the output for that in order to populate um, this field and the reusability of the module. I'm going to uh, basically just take the value of this uh, guy, um, Azure RM dedicated host group dot DHG dot ID. Okay, I just need to double check the syntax here. I don't need that. The name dhg.id. Okay. And usually I just put the description as provided by this uh, field. As a rule of thumb, we try to avoid to put uh, sensitive attributes in the outputs in uh, CAF. And we are more in the favor of dynamically retrieving, retrieving the um, sensitive output with a dynamic uh, data uh, object and retrieving it dynamically from it. That's usually the, the pattern that we use. So if there was any uh, sensitive or secret attributes out of that, I'd probably try not to export it uh, here. Okay, so right now it feels like I'm good with the dedicated host group. Uh, so now we have to do the, the hypervisor really, so the dedicated host. So if I go to the logic for this guy, here nothing really very different from what I've just uh, completed into dedicated host groups. And here I'm going to do the same thing. So a systematic uh, comparison with on the right side what I define in my variable and on the left side, uh, left hand side of the screen, what's defined into uh, the specs of the provider implementation. So the time of writing this is the provider 263. So I will also put later a queue in the code uh, to say uh, here in this module, uh, we tested that and developed that at Azure RM263. So we can have a quick uh, view if there's a bit of a gap and we need to review and modernize the module. So here, same thing, I'm stitching the uh, component y by one, uh, putting the variables, checking that we are putting the var dot settings uh, uh, object with the required and non required, and you can see on line uh, three my dedicated host uh, group ID. This is probably the thing that uh, we need to pay more attention later on. Uh, how do I resolve the right ID from this? Uh, Hypervisor. So how do I get the group ID uh, at the dedicated host creation? But for now, I'm just focusing on uh, implementing all the features as they are documented by the provider. So here I'm going to uh, create the dedicated host group ID, which is the um, Azure resource identifier of the dedicated host group. I want to uh, send to the dedicated host. So how do I want to link those guys together? And this job is going to be done actually by the uh, module uh, itself. So here uh, we're going to see later when we call the dedicated host, how do we get back the right dedicated host group idea? So here, this is a string. Uh, this is an object I get uh, directly as a standalone. And I'm going to verify that I don't miss anything. So just checking same thing at the uh, output here. So I can just probably steal it from somewhere else and just write it here. Okay, so here starts the interesting job. So 
you see that for the dedicated host, as we just mentioned, we're going to add the dedicated host group ID. So this is really the string ready to consume that I want to send to this module to say, hey, link this group, uh, link this uh, host to this group. So if I don't think too much, um, I just know that I have that already defined uh, here. The host groups are already exported inside the environment by the output of dedicated host group, the module, the other module that we just uh, created here. So we need to find this guy uh, locally and in other landing zone. So if I need to do it locally, I know it very uh, uh, easily. It's module dot the dedicated host groups. So this module. And then since I'm going to export every object, I just have square brackets to specify each dot value. And here I'm referring to the key that I specify on the right hand side of the screen here on dedicated host key. So each dot value dot dedicated host key. So here, very uh, basically, I'm just going to get it uh, locally here. So it works. Uh, I can just run in uh, running at this example, I just need to add dot ID at the end. And I have the right uh, key for the object inside this, uh, this guy. So I'm going to be able to test that first. So we can do a test, uh, a test uh, locally here and try to uh, execute that as a first, uh, uh, let's say, uh, experiment to see if it works or not. So here I put the path to my landing zone. So TF CAF landing zone CAF example. That's the one I uh, edited previously dot uh, var folder so i give it the path to my uh, example i just uh, created and i have the path to it and then it will be a level one um, example doesn't matter if you don't know what it is but it's just for the uh, overall landing zone testing I'm, uh, I'm doing and i'm going to set that into a particular tf state i'm giving it a name here and I will say, okay, link it to my environment, Contoso uh, Sandpit. So here I'm developing inside a landing zone. It's not really uh, a big difference here. I could just deploy uh, locally and do a Terraform plan apply, but I prefer to use the rubber facilities to manage the state for me, manage the level of composition, etc. So here you see there's a very uh, a stupid syntax mistake that I've done probably uh, somewhere. So just need to check uh, what I'm calling uh, here. And here you see uh, it's the wrong path uh, that I'm giving to access to those, uh, those modules. So here I'm going to review a little bit the variables and I can see that I called a name here at the top level, whereas I actually don't do that uh, anymore. So it's just uh, copy paste from previous invocation of the module here, the name, I'm going to remove it since it's already into the each dot value uh, dot name that we can see on the right hand side of the um, of the example that we have uh, here. There's something that also I will need to check uh, later. You probably noticed that dedicated host uh, doesn't take a resource group um, ID. So it's probably something I will need to uh, remove as well uh, a bit later. So here you can see in this run that uh, I actually defined uh, inside my uh, example, the variables for the um, uh, dedicated host, but I didn't define that into my module. So I need to go into my module and inside my locals, I need to do the same uh, kind of job to say into the compute here, dedicated host. So. Uh, equal try compute dot dedicated host or empty map. So the idea here is that this local is going to 
create for me the variables that uh, I will uh, need as um, as locals, and it will fill it for me uh, with the the content of var dot compute dot dedicated host dedicated host group. And if it's not, it's going to create um, an empty structure for me. So uh, this empty structure will actually make that. Uh, the the module will be called uh, zero time it won't be called so it won't create a dedicated host and it won't be dedicated create a dedicated host group so that's what's also uh, safeguarding me uh, to put the value to uh, null if i don't uh, to uh, to zero iteration if i don't have any uh, declaration for a dedicated host and dedicated host group so that's this empty object in my uh, try here So here you can see that I have an argument, automatic placement enabled, which is present. And Terraform doesn't seem to recognize it. So what is extremely weird is that it's present in the documentation. So here, um, this is probably, I suspect, uh, something uh, that is dedicated as a new, uh, new Terraform provider, whereas the module that I've dev I'm developing on right now is 2.55. So this is probably something that came after Azure RM 2.55. So for now, I'm just going to comment it to make uh, the this thing work, and I'm going to uh, review a little bit later to make sure um, that this is what I suspect. So I can check that if I am dating to 263 and I check in the provider. Yeah, this is something that uh, came a little bit uh, later than my current version. So 263 should be uh, a safe bet. Uh, it seems to be in 261 that it has been introduced, but that's uh, that's perfect. OK, so automatic placement enabled. I can uh, uncomment it now that I've dated to 263. So then I will uh, add uh, the dedicated uh, host. You can see on the right hand side of the variable that it is now uh, commented. So the next step is to do actually a couple of things to enable that and as well to enable that I might want to uh, create dedicated host for dedicated host group that might be into another landing zone. So let's review about that in a second. So making it work for multi uh, landing zone for cross landing zone composition. Uh, for that, we have a facility in uh, the um, in the Kafka form module, which is called the combine object. So what we'll need to change is the way we are calling uh, the module and the way we are retrieving more specifically, the way we are retrieving the resource group, um, the resource host uh, ID. Uh, the group host ID to be more precise. So uh, let's review a little bit about this one. So first I need to create those objects. So for that we're going to locals.combine object and we can see that actually this local combine object is going to be a combination of the object that I have created locally into this execution of the landing zone and the object that we are loading from the remote uh, state that uh, we might be uh, loading via the module. So this is uh, what we're doing with this uh, combined object uh, here. Uh, and you can see that it's all a merge and a try. So if there's no remote uh, capability, if I'm just using the module uh, locally as a, uh, let's say, one-time run, then no problem. It's going to uh, behave absolutely uh, transparently for that. So I create a combined object dedicated host group here, and I will merge it to the local structure into the local current landing zone. And I will try to uh, load it from remote landing zone object as well. So I can create here. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I can just go here, module dot dedicated host groups. And get it as well from the remote object capabilities. So I need to move the remote object capabilities as well. But this is it for the local combined object.
and I'll probably do that later as well for the host uh, groups, but for now, let's just work with this. So there's something I need to modify as well for that to, uh, for that to happen. And I need here to, uh, instead of call the module the dedicated host group, it's a little bit too easy. So I will need to call this local combine object. And for that, um, there's a pattern that we have in the code, so we don't have to uh, reinvent it. So I will pick it from somewhere else. I'll pick here this one, for instance. And you can see that I can just do a copy paste. And here we can see that it's a local.combine object dedicated host groups. And then I look at my structure on the right and I will find the right variable to locate uh, this guy inside the uh, combine uh, object. So I will do here uh, each dot value dot each dot value dot dedicated group dot uh, id and inside uh, the other one I need to access to the uh, LZ key so I need to find uh, this object's uh, landing zone key so you can see it in dedicated host I define dot LZ key so that should be able for me to access uh, the object so into this try, I'm trying either uh, via the LZ key, if the each LZ key object exists. If it doesn't, I will just use uh, the value of the current uh, landing zone and the value of the dedicated group uh, key here dot ID. So it's slightly more complex, but not that much more complex. Uh, and it just allows me to um, have the case where I created this thing locally or I load it to a remote state. Doesn't matter if you are just using uh, the module as a standalone, but if you're using things inside the landing zone context where you can read multiple state from the other, that could be um, a good thing to have and it's actually a, a mandatory pattern for uh, the module to work. When I say module to work, it's actually for the for the PR to be approved, but the module uh, does work uh, if you don't have the uh, capability. It's just that it doesn't match the common um, engineering criteria that we define for uh, the module to work in as many uh, contexts as possible. So now we can go on uh, the Azure portal and we can see that now we have our host uh, being deployed here and the capabilities in terms of different. Uh, virtual machines that we expect to have. So your your theory capabilities uh, here, the capacity of 32 D 2 SV3, etc., etc. So that's good, and that leads me to the next uh, activity I need to do. So once this thing has uh, completed, I uh, have to do the next job, which is um, defining the virtual machine. So how do I make the virtual machine object uh, evolve? so that I'm able to deploy uh, virtual machines as they are defined into this module, but had the field to specify I want this virtual machine to actually be deployed on this specific uh, dedicated host. So this is the next step that we are going to uh, review together. And while uh, the dedicated host is going to uh, be destroyed, I'm going to create a new um, variable and a new example and I'm going to check at what do I have inside the virtual machine object um, what do I need to refer the host group ID so I'll go back to the specs on the left hand side uh, of the screen here and I can see that virtual machine and I will find a dedicated host ID. Okay, so you can see that we're picking the ID of dedicated host directly. Okay, so that shouldn't be too um, too difficult. So same thing for Windows uh, machine, of course, dedicated host ID. Uh, okay, so I probably want to check as well if it's in the VMSS. Maybe it is, maybe not. Uh, at least we can have an ID on that. And what we're going to do is then simply create the example. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be present in uh, VMSS uh, currently. Okay, well, we'll see about that later. 
But okay, continue and let's do the example inside the virtual machine. So we're going to the right hand side of the screen now and uh, we are going to basically just first get an example for virtual machine. So we won't reinvent the wheel here. I'm going to copy paste uh, the example I've just done for dedicated host. And then I'm going to steal some uh, example for virtual machine. And then I'm going to start to prototype what a good configuration um, could look like. So for that same thing, I'm not going to reinvent uh, the, the wheel. I'm going to reuse the patterns that we have inside the environment. Okay, dedicated host VM. Configuration, and I will just add a virtual machine and a couple of additional components into uh, this guy. So I'll just pick an already existing example. So I'll take a simple one. I'll take a Windows uh, virtual machine here, and you see that I have a VNet. Uh, virtual machine, public IP, those very basic components. So I'm just going to um, steal those elements here. No need to reinvent them. And then I will compose uh, those those guys. So, so I, I will do it side by side so I can see uh, the definition of resource group. Um, I don't want to create something uh, overly complex. I just want to have this into the same resource group for the testing. I'm going to remove stuff I don't need. Uh, probably don't need uh, some of those guys or I can probably simplify it. Public IP, okay, might be uh, handy, but let's just remove it. I actually won't use it. So. Now we need to check inside the virtual machine. So I'll remove the public IP as well here. I'm going to give uh, probably a nickname into the NICs and internal DNS uh, name if I'm adding multiple examples, but we'll see that later. Uh, just want to make sure that uh, when I'm going to reference a virtual machine, actually, that's going to be into my virtual machine uh, setting object, a dedicated host uh, ID. So you want to have the capability to define this uh, object, this host uh, ID, into multiple forms. I want to be able to reference uh, basically the virtual machine host ID. If this is something that I created outside of this module, I might want to have the possibility to call it directly from an ID. Otherwise, I will call it from um, probably uh, an already deployed um, basically host group that comes before. So all of that would happen inside my virtual machine uh, settings. And if I take a, an example of other stuff, for instance, I can see that here I have uh, the virtual machine availability set uh, key, which is available. So we probably can use something uh, like that. So actually, we're going to use dedicated host groups. And we couldn't do the key as well, but this thing is a bit um, is a bit uh, limiting because then it will mean that I can only do something within the same deployment. So I probably want to refactor that to have that into an object, a dedicated host group uh, object, where I can specify uh, the key and then specify uh, the landing zone key. So that's more the pattern that we are using uh, right now. And if you look at that dedicated host, and actually we are uh, simplifying a, a little bit. So here I still put the full name of the object, but in the pattern, and we'll see that in the blog post, we probably simplify things more and just not reputting the full object name again, but just putting a uh, key, uh, LZ key or ID inside this object if we want to specify uh, you know the fully resource uh, uh, path id inside the object so i'll document that into the blog post but for now for our first attempt this is how we are going to uh, make it work so once we have that uh, then our job will be to go into the virtual machine module and send to this guy 
the dedicated host uh, information. So that will be actually an argument that we will add to the virtual machine. And then the virtual machine component will have to uh, retrieve the object it's needing um, to put the VM inside the right dedicated host. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going into the virtual machine module. Here I have VM Windows and VM Linux. So I will need to add the dedicated host uh, ID. And here I have multiple choices. I could resolve the ID outside. This is the pattern that we used uh, previously to resolve the ID from um, the group. But into this, uh, this virtual machine module, we're going to use the pattern when we resolve it inside. So actually, I will pass all the dedicated hosts object to the virtual machine. And from there, I will add the uh, will pick the right ID uh, internally. So via the logic here and the try, uh, I will find the right dedicated host ID into the full uh, set of objects that I have inside the environment. So the challenge would be uh, the same to uh, work with um, uh, dedicated host that I might have created uh, locally that I might have uh, created outside. So I will need to actually uh, do the same thing. Consider that I will need a local combine object that contains all the dedicated hosts uh, that I created. And then I will need to find the right host ID um, out of that. So same thing, I will do a combine object, getting the find uh, the right dedicated host uh, object that I specified on the on the right and not the dedicated host group and then uh, locate it. So I need to find the right expression that allows me to locate this um, object. So here, um, we are going to do that into another uh, part. I will uh, write down this part and uh, it will be documented into the, the blog post. One thing that is important is that you don't get it right from the, from the beginning and there's always a bit of refactoring that you're going to, to discover. So right now I'm on my VS Code uh, environment and I just uh, want to do a little bit of refactoring because we did the first iteration and that was great, it was working, but we probably need to refactor a little bit. We don't actually use the dedicated host group, we actually use the dedicated host for the VM. So I'm using uh, that dedicated host and then I'm gonna uh, just simplify. Now in the pattern we just use key inside it, uh, LZ key to specify a remote composition or just the ID to specify a resource identifier um, as we know it uh, for reference to something that might not have been deployed into uh, this module but something already exists on uh, somewhere on a subscription and I want to uh, stitch it to uh, to this virtual machine. So that's the pattern that we uh, that we use, uh, key LZ key and ID if we want to stitch directly the resource identifier. So for that, we need a little bit of refactoring as well into the VM uh, Linux uh, guy. So we'll have the two stuff side by side. And uh, here I'm gonna modify the dedicated host uh, ID. That's this thing. And I've just replaced dedicated host group by dedicated host. And uh, there's probably a bit of refactoring I can do as well in my uh, try and try, but let's uh, view that uh, a little bit later. So just dedicated host, simplify and just use the LZ key. And instead of the dedicated host group key, we'll just have dedicated uh, host uh, at the parent and then key in the child object. So I can do a quick uh, plan uh, to verify that it uh, that it works and then apply uh, to make sure that we have this. So once it's working, let's uh, just do a bit of refactoring. We are trying to use more visible structure now and uh, Coalis is uh, one of the functions that we are using. So Coalis will take um, the first non-null uh, value that it, that it gets. 
the result of that is that it's, it's a little bit more visible when you are uh, reading the logs, when you're trying to troubleshoot an, an error. So then what we're going to do is we're going to refactor that uh, slightly. And you see that I want to do a try. I want to coalesce uh, the object of either the host ID or uh, the, the key coming from the, from the landing zone or, or from the local module composition. So I want to have those two tries. So I want to have the first try on uh, host ID. Uh, and uh, then if not, I want to have the try on dedicated uh, host, getting the variable, finding the things inside uh, the, um, the value of this, uh, of this thing. And then if not, I want to return at the end of it the uh, uh, null uh, from my uh, try at the root. So I need to work a little bit on the parentheses here and it's much more readable uh, as well from the from the code uh, perspective so try first option second option then i'm closing uh, my coalesce and then uh, the null is the result that i'm returning anyway through this uh, to this try so if i uh, do not succeed in the coalescence uh, of those two guys then i will uh, basically return null to the try so no dedicated host configuration so much more visible and I probably would need to refactor the PPG and availability set uh, just in the lines uh, 63 and 64 but that's not uh, what I came here uh, today and I will probably need to spell uh, coalesce uh, correctly uh, as well for that to work uh, so let me fix this and we'll do a plan apply of the configuration and to finish you see that I'm uh, going to stage my changes and I'm going to uh, make sure that pre-commit is uh, running. So at least there's a, an FMT that is applied because that doesn't look very right. The, uh, the canonical formatting um, I've, I've, um, I've done here. So FMT would be a, a, good, a good idea here. So I have pre-commit in my uh, machine. Uh, it's coming with the rover container, the dev container that we're using. So we'll just stitch the changes. I'm going to just open a split console to uh, make sure it's there and we will just run it. And the advantage is we'll be uh, running the next time uh, I'm uh, doing a commit. So uh, here only have to do it once. So you see the formatting has changed. I can add that inside the environment and then uh, my uh, commit will be much cleaner inside the repo. So that's um, a little bit the overview of the steps we do to create add capabilities inside a module. Thank you uh, a lot for looking at this video. It's a pretty long one. So congratulations if you made it till the end and I hope uh, that uh, you will send your first contribution after that. Thank you.